Hi everybody, I love your energy for today's live stream. These are indeed exciting stories. Uh, so we have a lot to go over. Um, it's the live, live streams this week are starting today. Today is the first live stream of the week. So you know what that means? It means it's time to gift five memberships. Here we go. I gift memberships at the beginning of, um, of every, of every week. Here we go. I missed you guys too. All right. There we go, baby. Five memberships. Here they come. Woohoo. I'm glad you all like my new shirt, Nordstrom. Uh, let's see. All right. So, uh, th hey, Mark. And then uh, I saw a very nice, uh, generous gift from, where is it? Bubbles by Bimmy Bell. Thank you so much. That's very kind of you. Thank you. And I'm glad you feel that I'm very honest in my reporting. That means a lot. So, yeah. Um, oh, and thank you for gifting a membership, writer boy. All right. So... Oh, and Gareth, ah, the Golden Girls, always love it. 10, members, uh, ten memberships gifted, so kind. Uh, so welcome to the party, everybody. So nice to have you on here. I don't get to pick who gets a membership. YouTube decides that. Now, before we get started, uh, the DC story, Scott, they didn't make it today. They didn't make it. Somebody else just gifted 10 memberships. Who was that? Dakari Reed, thank you, so nice, so nice. And I am kind of wearing pink, that's right, Wiki Nomad, I got the pink manicure. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm a little dressed up today, I am indeed. I uh, wanted to, you know, do the shirt justice. All right, so two DC stories got booted off today, and I think that's something that James Gunn is really going to have to contend with. How is he going to make news that can compete with Marvel's news, right? So just really quickly, the two stories that I wasn't able to cover were, of course, the Supergirl writer story from earlier this week. But yes, not a particularly exciting choice. No offense to her, but this is an actress turned writer. And, you know, she hasn't really done any work yet. So it's hard to get excited about somebody who is so new to the new to this side of the business, I guess you could say. Hey, Mark, thank you for gifting a membership. And then also the authority, it seems, are on the table because uh, for Superman Legacy, James Gunn just cast uh, a Latina actress to play the engineer uh, who is a member of that team. Uh, that seems ridiculous to me to have so many characters in Superman Legacy. Uh, I think it seems way too crowded already for that movie, uh, but we'll see how it works out. Uh, hey, Ryan, thanks for gifting a membership. I honestly believe that it's just going to be like Guardians of the Galaxy, only Superman's going to be in it. And so, I mean, let's see. I mean, I think there's a chance that I might like it, but I'm particularly nervous about how the general public is going to react, especially since superhero fatigue is not looking good. Uh, Poke, who is the engineer? I mean, I mean, you know, she like has covered in metal. It's like basically, you remember Danger, the living danger room from uh, X-Men? It's like that, basically. Hey, Jerome, always so generous for you to gift a membership. All right, so we're going to go over the three, the three stories of the day. Please try to keep your, um, your comments uh, based on the story that we're discussing. And if you bring something up and say something before I've opened up that story to questions and comments, I might not be able to respond to it, even if it is a super chat. Uh, but then at the end of the stream, as always, for the final 10 minutes, you can ask me anything you like. So that's the time uh, for those questions. All right, everybody, are you ready? Oh, uh, thanks, Elise. Ah, uh, that's really sweet of you. I'm really feel good to be doing uh, be, to be able to do trailer reactions today. To be back doing that. Hey, Junior Pena, thanks for gifting a membership. So I was really glad. Ah, uh, thanks. For, uh, who said that? Ag68. I got this. Is I think this is either my last or my second to last Nicki Minaj lipstick, and then I'm gonna have to find a new color. All right, here we go, here we go, everybody. And thank you again for kind words. I always love breaking out a new shirt, and I'm glad this one's a hit. Uh, okay, all right, all right. And tomorrow I'll be posting reviews for The Crown and also Napoleon. I wanted to post uh, both of those maybe today, but a lot of, too much stuff is happening. And I can only do three stories a day, as you know, because unless there was like a huge breaking story, but... Um, the, the YouTube, YouTube will only put out three notifications a day. So that puts me in a difficult spot. All right. Story number one. Boop. Oh, Pedro Pascal. So I was like, I wasn't, I thought the stream was only okay when I, when I first put it together. Oh, thanks, Evan. 
I thought the stream was only okay when I first put it together. I was looking at the poster frame, and I was like, you know, this, uh, this Destin Daniel Cretton story's got a little juice to it, but I wish I had something else. The Supergirl writer story wasn't that cool, you know? So I was like, yeah, we could do a little better than that. And then this rumor came out about Pedro Pascal potentially getting offered Reed Richards. So I was like, oh, Reed Richards is a daddy in many ways, just like uh, Pedro Pascal. So I was like, let me, let me look into it. And before I went live, uh, my source was like, it is true. You know, my, the, one of my, my top source, so I very, very feel good about it. And my source was like, it is true. He does have the offer, and they're just waiting to see if he'll accept it. Marvel's been to hit this point before. So many actors have turned this role down. And we're going to talk about that. Hey, Joey. And I was like, man, because I'm seeing Wonka tomorrow, and then on Friday I'm seeing the color purple. And so those kind of that kind of eats into my day. So I was like, man, what if this stupid story gets confirmed while I'm out and about? And I was like, hey, you can cover it now, particularly because not only have you confirmed the rumor, uh, but I'm pretty sure he's going to take it, you know, unless he's online right now seeing some of the negativity. But I still don't think he's going to turn it down. And you want to know why? Although I have to tell you, another scooper said that potentially he was offered like the villain. So maybe he's Doom or something. But the villain's supposed to be Galactus. So I don't know. I think he's actually, I think he's a good Reed Richards. And we're going to do a poll in a minute as to whether or not. But that's right, just Josh and Tammy. You guys are all right. You're all correct. He's going to accept it because for him, this is a lot of money. So, so far, Marvel has not offered enough money to Adam Driver. Adam Driver was like, I'm not doing it for that amount of money. Uh, and I think they've been going down and down and down and down and down. Even Jake Gyllenhaal was like, not enough money. What's wrong with this role, by the way? But I think Pedro Pascal is going to be like, what? How much money? I think they're probably, if I were Marvel, I'd offer him about $5 million. That's what I would offer him. Uh, I'm, I don't see myself going to double digits, but I could maybe give him seven to eight million. I would even go maybe so high as a nine. I don't know if I would give him 10. Uh, but for Pedro Pascal, that's a serious amount of money. So I think he'll take it for that alone. I mean, and also the press tour and everything. And I think, I think Pedro Pascal, some of you commented on his age and that he was older for the role than you might have anticipated. I think he's fine for the role, but I do think that in terms of his age, I think that he wants to get as many roles and exciting big paychecks as possible while he can. That's what I would uh, think that he's trying to do. You know, I mean, he was an out of work actor for a very long time. Uh, you know, uh, Sarah Paulson had to give him her money that she had for food so that he could eat, you know, her per diem every day. And so, I mean, he's had a rough time and I, I think that he's not going to I would, I would be very surprised if he turned this down uh, for the money alone. All right, so here I'm going to do a poll, then I'm going to talk to you about my thoughts on it, and then you can, you can have your questions. So, all right, so hold on. What do you think? No one's giving him 20 million, Gramos. No way. What do you think of Pedro Pascal as Reed Richards? Love it. Hope it's not true. Then, uh, I guess I don't care. Hmm. I mean, I think it's a great idea. And I'll tell you why. All right? Like Noah says, I wouldn't have picked Pedro from the top of my head, but I think it could actually work. I would agree with that. And so let's go through it, okay? Um... Let's see here. So, all right. Uh, I, I am seeing, as I said, some serious detractors online, but I don't know if people are just upset with Marvel right now or something. I'm not sure. You know what I thought was interesting? If he is Reed Richards, uh, wouldn't that be crazy? Because I, I don't know if Tena Cuerta is going to keep the role, but I mean, what, what Sue's like choosing between, uh, you know, what, Caramel and Caramel? Between her uh, Reed and uh, Namor? She'd be like, I mean, Reed Richards would be like, why are you cheating on me with me? And she's just like, he pays more attention to me, Reed. <laughs> and they're both from Narcos, by the way. They're both from Narcos, both those actors. That's right, Klaus. She has a type. Ah, oh, that's so funny. That's great. Hey, we all have types. We all have types. I think that's hilarious. I love it. I, I think Vanessa Kirby's locked. I haven't heard anything different. Uh, and I, felt, I feel very strongly that she's locked. 
All right, so let's go through. Um, uh, now, oh yeah, one other thing is, is that some of you are like, isn't he a bit overexposed? Well, he has The Last of Us season two. Uh, I'm more excited about his glow up in Gladiator two. I'm very excited about that. And while he's no longer taking his helmet off in Star Wars, I bet he might take it off in like the Dave Filoni movie. So, and I agree with Google's Trowel O'Day that Glenn Howerton is the obvious choice for this role, but clearly they want a name. They want somebody that people have heard of. Uh, and again, I'm like, what is wrong with this movie that you feel that you need all these big names to try and sell it to the general public? I mean, Marvel has gone for bigger names than this than they ever have before. And I think it's weird. I don't know why they would change a, a working strategy. Like, just go discover somebody. Yeah, Chris, Matt Smith seems to maybe it's still not enough money and he couldn't be persuaded. Uh, Glenn Howerton, bless Lewis, is actually from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, but he was um, the, uh, the, the business lead in the recent Blackberry movie, and he was, he was just so good. He would have been a wonderful Reed Richards, but he's not getting it. All right, so no other actor. So here's my, here's my thoughts on it, okay? So no other actor wants this role. They got all the way down to Jake frickin' Gyllenhaal, and he said no. Do you know how many bad movies Jake Gyllenhaal has agreed to be in? That's crazy to me. Now, Sue Storm is the lead of this film, which uh, many people have confirmed at this point. Uh, and so that's one of the reasons that it seems a lot of male actors don't want to be Reed Richards. Uh, I suspect he's probably a little bit of a jerk in here, too. Uh, but whatever. And I think that villain energy is what mixes it up a little bit for Pedro Pascal. Sure, Joel has a bit of a villainous streak at times. Does he really? Not when Pedro Pascal plays him, in my opinion. And one of you, when I first tweeted this news, says, isn't he just basically science, Joel? Well, you know, you know, uh, you know, Hollywood lo hates to take a risk. So they're like, yeah, and you love Joel. So here's science, Joel. Uh, but Reed can really be a jerk. So I think that Pedro Pascal would be able to go further in that direction than he ever has before. But he's so damn likable that even if he was a jerk, you'd be like, oh, I think we can forgive him. And maybe it would make it believable that the Fantastic Four keep letting this guy back in and everybody keeps giving him a pass, even though he's pretty bad at points. I mean, Reed Richards is pretty bad. He really walks the line. All right, then, of course, he's got daddy energy. Who doesn't love the fact that he would once again uh, be playing a dad, right? I mean, it's almost hilarious at this point. I love it. Uh, and I think they're probably going to bring in, as I saw some people saying online already, Franklin and Valeria sooner rather than later with this casting, which is fine with me, especially because they're giving everybody kids these days in the MCU. Because if for some reason, Kevin Feige really wants to do the Young Avengers. And I even said in my recent video, spinning off of the Marvels, that I felt that Franklin and Valeria would be welcome members and perhaps in some ways very needed members on that team. Uh, so Mando, Joel, even Maxwell Lord was a papa in uh, Wonder Woman 1984. So I think they're probably going to go for the Incredibles approach. You know, the Incredibles is partially based on the Fantastic Four. So uh, I think that's clearly the, the, the direction they're going. Then let's be honest, because there's Vanessa Kirby right there, or, or right, right here. There's Vanessa Kirby uh, on the red carpet for Napoleon. And don't they make a great couple? That's a fantastic couple. That's a fantastic couple, the two of them. I love it. They look so good together. I, I think that's just, they really fit well, so well together. I think that's just fantastic. So, yeah, he doesn't look like a dad, Nick Dean. What the heck? I don't think so at all. I think they look like a great couple. So, but as I said, it is pretty funny that uh, Sue Storm will clearly have a type. You know, usually... N Namor is supposed to be like someone she's never been with, that type, you know, and it's like forbidden fruit. But then she's just like, damn, that guy looks like Reed, but he's nicer. <laughs> Hilarious. All right, so let me see what the vote is, and then I, you guys can answer, ask some questions. But I, he's a daddy, that's right. He, he's, he's daddy, he's, uh, and now he's going to be MCU daddy. Daddy's going to spank a lot of people. That's what Reed Richards basically does. Think how much fun Pedro, some people said he was too silly, but what's wrong with that, especially in the MCU? So 50% of you love it. That's not bad. I think Kevin Feige can work with that. 27% of you hope it's not true. And then a large number, 21% of you simply don't care. Oh, that's tough. That's pretty tough. I think that, I mean, it really goes to show you that the MCU really should be taking a break, but they're like, no, full speed ahead. Let's make the Fantastic Four. And when the heck is the Fantastic Four coming out even? It's just ridiculous. It, I mean, like, who knows? 
Uh, but, you know, make that money, Pedro Pascal. I mean, what a rebound for this guy. It's just incredible. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's how I feel about it. I'm like, get the, get the cash, Pedro Pascal, and then who cares what happens? I mean, I don't really think Pedro Pascal cares. He'll have his money, and I bet you that he'll be good in it, even if you don't like the movie. You'll be like, well, it wasn't really Pedro Pascal's fault, and I enjoyed him in the film. <laughs> even if you don't think he's well cast, I still think you're going to like him. But yeah, so I think it's good. But uh, yeah. All right, so let's go to the... uh, Does anyone have any questions about this before we move on to the next story? Questions or comments? Shawnee wants all the Pedro he can get. He doesn't care. Care Bear says, what about Dev Patel? I think Dev Patel maybe wasn't a big enough name. Elliot Bullock says, Evan Moss uh, uh, Bachrock from The Bear for uh, Ben is the Thing. What a waste of that actor. I hope not. I would be furious if he was cast in that role. Michael Sin says, any word on Agatha being the nanny for Reed and Sue would love the classic comic book throwback. Uh, But she killed a dog. Can she really be a nanny to children? Let's see here. Sean Turner says, Pedro and Vanessa are 100% a power couple. Couldn't agree more. They look good together. They look good. They'd be a very sexy couple in the MCU. Everybody would be like, damn, what do they want to do? Derek B says, it reminds me of the Margot Robbie for Sue Storm thing. It just feels like they want him because he's popular and there are better choices. People may love him, but I don't know if they'll love him in this. Well, I think Marvel just wants to be loved and they don't care if if they get it cheaply these days. They're like, boy, this is, let's borrow some of this Pedro Pascal love because things are not going well for them. Uh, Yeo Anna, uh, Glenn Howerton wasn't offered the role because he's simply not a big enough name. Uh, and I don't know what's ever going to get them th- him there. Uh, maybe someday. But that's why he didn't get this. Uh, you know, back in the day, I think he would have been considered. But now Marvel's not willing to do that. Hey, uh, thanks for joining, Brett James Bishop. Hold on. The dog was an illusion, Klaus. Hmm. Let's see here. Movies TV Review says, how much is Vanessa Kirby getting for the Fantastic Four? I'm not sure. I didn't hear anything about her salary, but I'd be shocked if she got anything more about than $10 million either. I think they're both, I'll be real honest with you. I think Vanessa Kirby is about two or three million, maybe. That's all I would pay her. Uh, I mean, most people don't even know who Vanessa Kirby is. Um, and then I'd be like, the payment is joining the MCU. And for Pedro Pascal, I, as I told you, I'd go anywhere up to nine. But I'm not giving him 10. Maybe I'll give him a bonus or like for the second film. I mean, you know how many movies he's going to be in as Reed Richards? He'll be making so much money. He'll be making tons of money off this role. It just prints money. That's why I think he's going to say yes. They're like, do you want this money machine? And he's like, oh, yeah, I do. Jake Van Norton says, I hope he looks good with the Reed Richards hair. Oh, that's right. And well, they let him keep the mustache. Hmm. I didn't even think of that. Gonzalo says, let's go Chile. That's great. Let's see if does he need the mustache. I, I don't know. He didn't have a mustache, right, as Maxwell Lord, and he looked good. And I don't think he had the mustache as Mando either. I like the mustache. Ivan, I think they're trying to lock down uh, Sue, and, uh, Sue and Reed first. I haven't heard any names otherwise. Gian Quesadilla says, do you think he could become the face of the MCU like Robert Downey Jr. was if Fantastic Four is successful? No, because I think his face is too many other places. You know, I think it's hard to be the face of something if you're everywhere. Oh, let's see here. And then Taylor Lewis says, how much do you think the last Fantastic Four movie will hurt the box office draw of this movie? I think it depends what the story is. And I think it depends maybe if Deadpool 3 is good and if Marvel truly does slow down. They only have one superhero movie next year. So I think it would be all right. Hey, doll. Marco feels he's overexposed. Hey, I love Vanessa Kirby. I know exactly who she is. But if I were Vanessa Kirby's agent, I would say... Who doesn't know who she is? A little show called The Crown, thank you very much. And if I were Kevin, if I were Kevin Feige, I'd say, ain't nobody watching that show. It's like someone from Mad Men. And if I went out to the, my local mall and asked people who Vanessa Kirby was, they'd have no frickin' idea. So that would be me arguing both sides of that uh, negotiation. Dakari says, do you think they'll go all out with the stretchy powers? Well, you know what? 
I'd call up Brad Bird because I recently rewatched The Incredibles 2 and I was amazed at how impressed I was um, that uh, with the, what they figured out to do with the stretchy powers for uh, Elastigirl. He has been confirmed. It was just confirmed. Let's see. By who? Who just confirmed it? Where is it? Where is it? Slash film? Come on. Is the trade confirmed it? That's not a confirmation. If it's not on the Hollywood Reporter, Variety, or Deadline, I mean, it might be any minute, but I mean, come on. Don't make me laugh. Ha, ha, ha. Are you sure they're not? I mean, I think they're just confirming with their own sources. Yeah, they're just confirming with their own sources. Marvel has not officially announced it. You guys, you guys, it's not official. No, no, it's not. <laughs> if it, it's not confirmed till it comes from a trade. That's the rule, okay? Like, until it's confirmed by Variety, Deadline, or The Hollywood Reporter, or... Somebody tweets it from the production, like Marvel, Kevin Feige, Pedro Pascal himself, or Matt Shankman saying, welcome to the Fantastic Four. That's it. That's your only uh, hope. So it's not confirmed. You guys got to watch out on Twitter because there are some sites, and hey, you know, they're just playing the game, okay? But because they're trying to make money off of Twitter, thanks to Elon Musk completely ruining that platform, uh, they're trying to clickbait people, you know? So uh, you just have to be really careful uh, and, and, and figure that out. You know, I, th I told you I think it's probably going to happen, but I mean, I heard that he has not signed. The deal has been offered to him, but it's been offered to other people. Pedro Pascal has to sign it and it has to be given back. And then once it is given back, then it would be official. So, okay. I think we have any other comments about that? I can't believe so many of you think it's thought it was confirmed. And I've run into some of the people who run some of these Twitter channels and they're like just one dude. I mean, I guess I'm just one person, one 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 gal. But uh, you know, So Daniel, so Daniel RPK confirmed that he signed. Until it's in a trade, it's not 100% confirmed. And I would not believe it until it was in the trade or, as I just said, those rules. All right. I don't like commenting on other reporters and scoopers. I don't think it's appropriate. So let's not, let's not continue with this line of discussion. Uh, you guys are all very kind. I appreciate that. Uh, okay. All right. Any other comments? Are we going to boop on to the next story? Boopity boop, boop, boop. Okay, next boop. Okay, Adam Byers. All right. Story number two. Here we go. All right. I mean, that was quite the first story. All right. Boop. Oh, look at this. Destin Daniel Cretton. This was formerly the biggest story of the day, but then Pedro Pascal blew it out of the water, and so Kevin Feige's probably like, oh, good choice of who to, of who to cast. Thank you, Bruno. That's very kind of you to, get, uh, to, gen, uh, to donate those uh, memberships. So anyway, Sean Chi, and look at this picture, by the way. That's why I included it. It not only has Destin Daniel Cretton and uh, Kevin Feige in it, but that's Victoria Alonzo over there, who was, of course, fired a little bit later. Uh, for a lot of stuff, but largely crappy VFX and terrorizing the VFX community. So, and you're like, whoa, man, that was, that, that's when they were, that's when they were uh, riding high. But anyway, um, I hear, I checked. As soon as I saw this news, I agreed with all of you. They're cutting Kang. They're not going to do Kang Dynasty. I was like, for sure. But then I checked with my sources and they were like, nope, they're still planning to do it. I don't believe it. I think they're going to cut the movie. I think they're just going to let it die slowly. 
They're like, oh, look, it doesn't have a writer. Oh, look, it doesn't have a director. Then, oh, no, we can't have Jonathan Majors anymore because I don't think his court case is going to go well for him. And then they'll be like, ah, oh, what do you know? We're not going to do the movie. I think that's kind of what it is. I mean, even if they recast Kang Jerome, I don't think anybody cares enough about Kang to do that. I don't think people are like, but you must tell the Kang story. I think everyone's like, you know what? Not into it. So here's what I think. So... I saw some people, we should just go straight to Secret Wars. And I agree with that. I don't, I think that should be definitely what we go to next. I think Kang Dynasty is just killing time until we get to the movie everybody really wants to see. And then I saw uh, some other people on Twitter saying, what about Avengers versus X-Men? That should be an Avengers movie. And I'm like, I don't know. Let me tell you, I read that comic. It was awful. Uh, but it was still a good idea. And as you can see, it looks the exact same post picture as the way uh, the Batman v Superman and the Civil War movie posters looked. Hey, Dakari, that's also, again, very generous of you. So I think you could do Avengers vs. X-Men as a movie if you just didn't pay any attention to the comic beyond the title. And also, it might be a good way to hit the ground running with the X-Men and ha not have to do an origin story for them. So that could kind of work in that regard. You know, like the X-Men come on over from alternate universe, right? And then they're like, this planet ain't big enough for the both of us. And then they have a fight. And then they decide, yes, it is. Uh, it's not, and also would have to have significantly good battle sequences. Like Matt, uh, who just said, uh, Cosmic said, hire the Russo brothers. I agree. It would have to be like Avengers Endgame, where it had multiple good action sequences. Where, uh, or Civil War. You know, where you just were like, these sequences are so cool. And, I, you know, who cares if the rest of the movie in between is good or not? That's kind of, I think, what they what you need to do. I know Drew says, does this basically mean Kang is out of the MCU? With read rumors on same day, maybe they're shifting towards Doom, who is huge for Secret Wars in the comics. Maybe. I don't, I don't think you need any of these characters. I mean, you could just have the TVA be in charge of what's going on uh, with Secret Wars. You know, they don't have to totally have it based too much on the comics. They could go with Doom. But I, I, I told you before, I don't really, I think Doom's a little bit of a tough sell. So in the same coverage, when they talked about the, and so Destin Daniel Cretton exited the movie. It was his choice to leave. He said, man, this is taking too long. I don't want to do this movie anymore. And they said it was on good grounds. The studio isn't upset with him for leaving and that he's still working on Wonder Man. And we're all like, is he? And then they also said he's working also on Sean Chi. And we're like, oh, that's a pretty good idea. Because when's that character coming back? We loved him. The only thing I feel bad about is that I really liked uh, um, Dustin Daniel Cretton's ideas for who should be on his Avengers team. I know that he not only wanted Sean Chi, but he also wanted Moon Knight and She-Hulk on the team. And I thought that was a really nice lineup. So I feel a little bit bad about maybe potentially losing that. But yeah. Uh, but so, yeah, so he's not going to direct this anymore. He's still friends over there. Neither of the Avengers movies have directors anymore. Jack has a trade reported that he's been cast or you got, I mean, let's not do this again. I don't want to say anything about any other people until, don't tell me the Pedro Pascal is confirmed until he's like really confirmed. Okay. People on Twitter, who, what? 80s models. I can't believe that, Jay, you're saying that is the, the confirmation source. 80s model says, uh, gifted, oh, thank you for gifting a membership. And Lady Jennifer Snow, so great to see you back. Thank you. Did Pedro Pascal post it on Instagram? Let's go look. All right. Instagram. Where? It's not here. Is it like a, is it like a, it's not here. You guys are ridiculous. Hey, Julio. This is the state of modern entertainment news. Ha! Martin Radio, I should block you for that. Uh, let's see here. Dakari says, I think he, we, oh, they should do, this stream's getting out of control. Okay. Devin Henderson says, the MCU has so many characters, every project should be an Avengers team up going forward. I love Shang-Chi, but it needs to be Shang-Chi and nine friends. That's hilarious. I love that. That's really funny. Uh, all right. Uh, and Danny says, is China forgiven Simu Liu? I don't think they ever will, because unless they can, they can I don't think they will. Oh, thanks for gifting a membership, Julio. That's very nice of you. That's right, Poke. There are a few trolls here, but if people want to pay for a membership to be trolls, I guess, 
I guess maybe you got gifted a membership, but hey, you know, we'll give Martin Radio one more time. But if Martin Radio does that again, I'm not even putting you in a timeout. You're, you're, you're getting banned. Uh, all right. Does anyone have any questions about this story? See, I think everybody's nice like me. I never guess that people are kind of jerks. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. Hey, everybody. It's nice to see so many people tuning in. Devin Henderson said he could be, could he be directing Secret Wars instead? I don't think so. Uh, I think he wants to just focus, focus on Sean Chi. Let's see here. Ah, uh, thanks, Dory. All right, let's go to the next story. I don't think you guys have anything else you want to ask about this. It's pretty self-explanatory. All right, so next story, story number three, and then we'll do Ask Me Anything. All right, story number three. What's Zazie done now? Ah, uh, David Zaslov. You know, I think it's interesting. David Zaslov has been a high-ranking uh, executive for many, many years, but he was anonymous. Nobody paid any attention to what he was doing because he oversaw, I think he was at NBC for a long time, and then he went on to do Discovery, and so he was mostly working in reality television and stuff like that, you know, uh, reality TV, documentaries, those kinds of things. Uh, and he actually even went so far as to say that dramas were, were, were too much money. To, to, they were not worth it. Oh, did I forget to, I said boom baby, didn't I? Didn't I boom baby, delicate genius? Okay, boom baby, you guys, I got a little annoyed. All right, so anyway, boom baby, all right. So anyway, um, so yes, a high, so he was anonymous. Uh, Matt, we already talked about that at the beginning. Please try to keep your, com I'm not gonna look at the comment section right now. Okay, so a high ranking, uh, so he was a high ranking, anonymous executive that, you know, didn't really have anybody pay attention to him. And I think he's still operating that way. I think that he has absolutely no idea, um, you know, how, how, how to conduct himself in that way. I'm going to go look and see if Deadline actually confirmed. And if it didn't, it's going to be not good. They're saying it's a rumor. Deadline didn't confirm it. Ah! Uh, all right, so he, it is an article in Deadline, but you gotta pay attention to the word where it says I'd, I'd to play, you know, the, the trades, you know, how, you know how crazy it is uh, with um, entertainment news, okay? Even the trades have to play this game. So they ran an article talking about the rumor. It's not confirmed. He's in talks. They gave him a contract, which I already told you. And he has to decide if he wants to sign. So you guys got to really, really careful, pay close attention. You don't be sloppy. Okay. Okay. I'm not going to ban anybody because it was in deadline. There was an article. They just were sloppy and not, you know, maybe they were also enthusiastic. Okay. Okay. So back to David Zaslav, who's like, I wish people would talk about my projects like this with this kind of excitement. All right. So anyway, uh, I think he doesn't know how to talk in public or to other creatives. So, uh, he's had, so this is basically an update on some of the things that are going on right here, right now with him. Okay. Uh, so, uh, let's see. So the tax write-off movies, that's not going very well at all. First, he did a, a write-off on Scooby-Doo, and then he did a write-off on uh, Batgirl. But he said, oh, these weren't my movies, and I just got rid of them, and so I'm going to continue on, and I'm not going to do it anymore. But then he did it again with Coyote vs. Acme, and unfortunately, he made the mistake of canceling a movie where the director has a lot of friends. So everybody got really upset because they were like, that could be me. And so what happened was, and I thought this was very interesting, the trades reported that a number of directors started canceling their meetings with Warner Brothers to see it for, you know, to pitch and to potentially go on to other, pro to, you know, either pitch their own projects or to work at Warner Brothers directing one of, you know, direct Warner Brothers in-house things. 
Uh, so that really freaked Warner Brothers out because everybody was like, it's going to happen to my movie. So I don't want to work at a studio that's willing to do that. Uh, so they said that the director of uh, Coyote vs. Acme can pitch the movie to other screening service, streaming services. And they said Amazon Prime is like, we're interested in this because I think Prime Video is also doing that Merry Little Batman movie. Although I got to tell you, I watched the trailer for Merry Little Batman, uh, which is Damian Wayne on Christmas Eve. And I thought it was awful. I thought the animation was horrible. I thought it made no sense because that's not what Damian Wayne wears or acts like. Uh, it was just a disaster. And I would have definitely written that off. <laughs> I would have been like, this never should never see the light of day. And yet here it is. So if nobody buys Coyote vs. Acme, that would certainly be an interesting development. But let's see. Uh, you know, and I thought it was interesting that Phil Lord and Chris Miller came out, like, I think earlier today or late last night. And they were like, oh, we saw Coyote vs. Acme. It's fantastic. And, you know, I think they take this stuff very personally because, of course, they got kicked off of Han Solo, the Solo Han Solo movie. And I think that, um, that was, you know, that was been, that's been tough for their career. I mean, they've kind of recovered, but not totally. And so I think that, you know, that's one of the things that probably motivates them to speak up a little bit more. Uh, and then also, uh, someone from the House of Representatives, that's right, Polk, uh, Representative Joaquin Castro, uh, a representative from Texas who's a Democrat. I mean, when David Zaslav upsets the Democrats as a Hollywood figure, you're like, mm, I think this might, you might have gone too far, Zazzy, although I believe Zazzy is a conservative. So anyway, he said, Joaquin Castro said that he's going to investigate this idea of writing off movies for a tax write-off because he feels it's insurance fraud. And you're like, oh, really? Interesting. You know, so, I mean, let's see if uh, Ca uh, Representative Castro can make that stick. Uh, but I'm sure Zazzy's like, I don't want people looking through my tax thing. Uh, so I think he did, probably didn't like that much either. And then the reason I have the strike posters up there is that David Zaslav gave an interview. And in it, one of the things he discussed was that he felt that the studios overpaid to end the writer's strike. Why say that? Why not just be like, I'm glad it's over and I'm glad I was a part of it? Because David Zaslav did help negotiate that agreement. But no, no, he had to say, writers ain't worth the $700 million we paid to get them back at, at the table. So it was just an incredible thing to say. But here's the thing. Zazzy don't care because Zazzy's making so much money. In 2021, he made $246 million. Uh, some of it's in stock, but that's an incredible amount of money. And then last year, in 2022, he made $39.3 million. And next year, in 2024, he's allowed to sell Warner Brothers. And I told you that I've heard from many, many people that he will. And he's going to make so much money off of that sale. So he doesn't care. And, and, you know, maybe he does this to drive the price down. Maybe he's a genius. <laughs> he's like, I'm going to make everyone think that this is like the, the dumbest run studio ever. And then when I, everyone's going to want me to sell it, it'll push the sale through with the government and everything like that. He's, you know, and, uh, and then he'll make a ton of money as he, as he heads on out and says, thanks everyone. This was great. I loved owning Warner Brothers for two years. So I think that's just crazy. Oh, Stu Pew Pew. I'm so glad you're out of the hospital. Welcome back. I'm glad you're doing better. That's wonderful. Comic Boom agrees that Zazzy knows exactly what he's doing. He very well probably does. I mean, he's not an, he's not an idiot, despite all evidence. All right, so um, Jake Van Norden, I'm not even looking. I'm not even looking. I'm looking because I have to. It's my job, you guys. I don't see a confirmation. It's still the same eyed storyline. Maybe you didn't hear our whole conversation about how that's not actually a confirmation. That's, that's what I'm going to choose to believe, Jake, because I know you, and I know you wouldn't do that. Uh, Dream says, your streams bring me so much joy. I'm sorry for the trolls today. Ah, oh, I have a suspicion bots are targeting Marvel content. No, I just think it's a later stream and people are loopy. And I think also people are, I think, you know, reading comprehension is tough. You know, it's like I told you. Entertainment news is also often a lot like um, uh, playing telephone, you know, like people, even things I'll report, sometimes I'll get, they'll get repeated back to me and I'm like, that's not even what I said. But Dream, that's very generous of you and very, very kind of you. And I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. I, I, I really, that means a lot. 
Does anybody have any questions about this story or comments before we go to the Q&A? I'm glad that Daniel RPK is saying he signed, but I need to see it from a trade before it's actually true. Okay. Not you too, Poke. Confirmed by who? It was confirmed on deadline? All right, I'm going to look. I'm going to look. I keep falling for this crap. All right, let's see. They didn't confirm it in deadline. You guys are driving me crazy. A friend just texted me and said, the people are out of control on the live stream today. What the heck's going on? Ugh. All right. Let's go to the Q&A section, okay? Must not lose temper. Mm. I love you all. Okay, Q&A section, 10 minutes. It's 5.17. We've got till 5.27. I'm glad everyone's having a good time. <laughs> Danny Boyd says, what was the better version of Secret Wars? I'm more familiar with the Beyonder version, which I think was the first. Uh, I think they're both not great and they're overly complex. Oh, thank you for gifting 10 memberships, Michael. That's great. I, I appreciate that. Britt, I'm glad you're having a good time. Uh, Buck Spaceman says, Grace, do you think, do you think how vocal Noah Schnapp is on social media is going to damage the reach of Stranger Things season five because he's posted some terrible things? Well, I will tell you, you know, Noah Schnapp is of, is of course Jewish, so I think you can understand where he's coming from. But I do think that as a public figure, I think that he should be a little bit more careful as to not seem so callous to the sufferings of others. And to understand, I think he's making the situation seem very black and white when it's actually extremely complex and full of grays. Uh, I, I think, I don't think it'll hurt Stranger Things season five because he's not the star. Uh, and I think that uh, if I was working for Netflix, I'd probably tell him, and I'd be like, you're not a political figure, Noah. You know, like, uh, I mean, it's like I said with Brie Larson, Noah Schnapp should do whatever he wants to do. That's his call. And he should do what's important to him. But he does need to understand that there's a very strong chance that he could severely end up severely limiting his audience. And that could really hurt his career going forward. Uh, Resident Justice, as I said at the top of the stream, I feel that uh, there's too many characters in Superman Legacy. So I, I just feel he already has a Justice League. He's apparently got the authority in there. I mean, it's just too many characters. Uh, SWJ128 says, hello from the poor box office, with, hello, with the poor box office for the Marvels, would Disney have been better just sending the movie to Disney Plus? Thank you again for all your work. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for, uh, thanks for, for enjoying it. I really appreciate that. Um, I, I look like, I gotta tell you, I thought the Marvels was surprisingly entertaining and fun, as I said. Would I have ever greenlit that movie? Never. I never would have greenlit it at any point, even after Captain Marvel made a billion dollars and they came to me and they said, this is what we'd like to do. I would have been like, no, I'd be like, I'm not, I don't have to do what you want. You know, Brie Larson, I'm not doing it. And so I don't understand why it was ever greenlit in the first place. Hey, Cowboy Kush. Ah, thanks. That's very kind of you. And I'm glad you like my shirt. Chris says, do you have any updated tea on Joker 2? I haven't heard anything about Joker 2. Uh, thanks, Diana. That's very nice of you, Diana. Thank you very much. B. Weeb says, Grace, who would you replace Kang as the architect of Secret Wars? I want Doom to teleport. I heard that, you know, a lot of it is going to be the TVA putting that together. I wouldn't mind that it was the TVA or something like that. I mean, Marvel has such a bad track record with villains. I mean, you know whoever is at the end, I mean, at the end of the Secret Wars, they're probably going to get killed. Uh, whelmed. Uh, come on, I'm not addressing that. That's just... Uh, that's like that's just speculation. AHJ says, "What's an underrated Batman comic that people should give a try?" Ooh, I really like 
Batman and Robin, written by Peter Tomasi. That was the best Damien I've ever seen. The Damien Wayne. And then the delicate genius says, will Sony make Madam Web a mutant? Are they allowed to? If they ban some, oh, if I ban someone, I should prune them. But if I prune, prune people can come back, pruned people can come back in the t- in, on Loki. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I don't think they're going to make Madam Web a mutant. And I don't believe it. I mean, they could technically, but I think Kevin Feige would just be like, Amy Pascal, I can't take it anymore. I mean, have you seen, he's like, you'll be like, do you see what I'm dealing with over here? No. Uh, Devin Henderson said, is Loki the new watcher? Oh, that's an interesting idea. No, but maybe they can play cards. (laughs) Loki's like, I'm just sitting here. Is there any chance that you might come over here and hang out with me? Uh, Brody, we have a play date. Brody Rill says, have you ever been to Canada? I have been to Canada. I've been to Canada twice. Once I went to wherever they speak French. I forget where that was. I was very little. Uh, But I do remember going to the Edmonton Mall. I went to the Edmonton Mall. I stayed in the hotel at the Edmonton Mall. And they had a comic book store where the comic books were lined up like books, like the the Archie Digests. I'll never forget it. It was one of the coolest experiences. Oh, Jaden says the other accounts are saying the deadline confirmed it. Ah, you know what? I, uh, what I would encourage you to do is that when someone on Twitter says something is a deadline, just have, pop over to deadline and make sure. You know, don't just take anything at face value. Oh, MM92, I'm so glad you feel that I'm a trustworthy scooper. I really appreciate that. And Miguel says, I appreciate the free reading comprehension lesson. Uh, thank you. You know, like, uh, it's just important to pay attention to it. Let's see here. Alex says, get yourself some chicken nuggets after the stream to unwind. Oh, that's very, you guys are so nice to take care of me. You know, the other day I did get the chicken nuggets that you guys recommended. and It was delicious. Although I tried to get, uh, I'm back on my diet, so I don't know if I can do that anymore. I'm trying to be really good. But I did try and get some chocolate chip cookies because I could still eat sugar at that point, And they didn't give them to me. I was sad. But the rest of it was delicious. And then uh, Yoram says, do you think the Marvels will flop? It already flopped. It's over. It's Jover, as they say. Let's see here. You guys are really nice. I'm glad you guys, everyone's enjoying the craziness of the stream. Uh, Let's see here. Uh... Danny Boyd says, pumpkin pie or sweet potato? Not, I don't even like sweet potatoes. Pumpkin pie for sure, although I can't eat it right now. Harry Bull says, hey, Grace, are you going to break down the what if trailer? I'm not going to break it down because the trailer itself actually isn't performing that well, but I am right now planning to break down the episodes. Harry Bull says, how did Monica end up in a different universe? Jump points don't work that way. Well, I think when you have the Cree quantum bands, they, they're like a little extra. That's how, that's how much bling Darben was wearing. Uh, Owen Tinkler says, hey, Grace, what's going on with Comixology? I wanted to get it, but now it's no more. Uh, it's only going to be around till December. Uh, and it's got a lot of bugs in it, so I, don't, I wouldn't even hop on now. It's sad. Comixology, I, I will see how it looks on Amazon, but I'm really nervous about it. Mimsy says, it's raining here in Tanzania, but it's cool since I get to watch the stream while on my way to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. Is that for real, Mimsy? Because that is super cool, if that's actually what you're doing. Uh, good luck on Mount Kilimanjaro, boy. Uh, Lucky, uh, Lucky Mahai says, hey, just hopped on and don't know if it was talked about already, but I hope that they stick with the daily drop of episodes because it makes it feel like an event to not miss it. Yeah, I wonder what time they drop. That's also very crucial. Xavier Tavares, what a great name, says, hi, with recent rumors of the Kang storyline being tossed out, who would you make the main villain? Oh, I think I said that. Uh, And then Danny says, I remember your pandemic streams and how it kept folks connected in hard times. Ah, thanks. Would you ever do that format again? Um, I don't know. It's, I mean, look how crazy it is right now. I mean, it's a little bit hard. Um, But, you know, you never say never. Oh, look at Ashaman being so happy to be back in as a member. That's so awesome. Did J-Lo, oh, J-Lo. Oh, so Brett James Bishop did five memberships. J-Lo did five memberships as well. You guys are so generous. Thank you. 
And then Gamer on a Budget says, The Marvels was a delight. Now I'm really trying to get through Loki. Oh, it's worth it, Gamer on a Budget. Get through that. It's a great show. And then Super Extrovert says, Hey, Grace, my goal is to publish a short story and novel series. Do you have any advice for breaking through as a new writer in this new generation? Well, Super Extrovert, that's a great name for you. I'm glad you're out there doing your thing. My, my advice would be to make sure you have your business hat on. What, what kind of books and uh, topics are selling right now? What are people interested in? What's your angle? What's the cover going to be? What's the back going to be? How are you going to get people to make sure they read it? That's just as important as it being a good story. Perhaps in some ways, more important. Uh, Danny, I don't know if Napoleon's going to do well at the box office or not. It won the poll that I took for what are you going to watch on Thanksgiving? The famous Kiki says, DC can crank out flops, but Marvel can't. Why? Um, well, that's because, uh, well, you know, DC did, and now they have a new head. Look at Lisa gifting 10 memberships. Aw, uh, thanks, Lisa. I loved hearing about your pug dog the other day when I was talking about how good Quizlet is. Uh, that's so generous of you, Lisa. Jason Kelly says, the fall of the MCU is so much more entertaining to many than the actual MCU. People love the fall of anything. The fall of DC was very entertaining. Uh, but you know what? I think let's hope we have a rise. You know, that's what's good. You want these things to go up and down. John says, Loki confused me. Does the time branch represent a universe? Yes, there are. Are there many branches in one universe? Can we go back to Iron Man escaping a cave? Well, I think each branch is a universe. Paul Brunel says, do you think any other MCU movies besides Deadpool 3 could make a billion before Secret Wars? I do not. Rodrigo, I don't think Rebel Moon looks very good. So that's why I'm mostly staying away from it, out of respect for Zack Snyder. Let's see here. Hey, Xavier Tavares, welcome back. And then Manly, Gregory, that's great, says, please humor me. Alyssa Sutherland as a Matt Reeves Poison Ivy. I love, she's from uh, Evil Dead Rise, right? I don't know about, I think she might, I think she might be a little bit um, uh, like too, too imposing for Poison Ivy. I think Poison Ivy's usually a little more delicate. I don't know. Who just gifted a bunch of memberships there? Emilio, thank you for gifting five memberships. Corey uh, Ed Four says, why is Tom Hiddleston making it seem like he's done as Loki? That's because I think he wants to win an Emmy or get nominated for an Emmy. So if you're done, it's more likely to get a nomination because people want to reward you for a body of work. And so I think that's what he's doing. Brian Brown says, Grace, isn't it interesting that Marvel wanted Ryan Coogler to direct Secret Wars and he hasn't responded? That's right. Maybe Ryan Coogler's like, oh, the MCU ship's going down. And then Jaden says, do you think that the overwhelming content that is going to be coming from not only Marvel but from DC over the next few years will hurt both? For sure. A thousand percent. They're just flooding the marketplace. The Rock was at the White House today. Ah, I love The Rock. He's so great. Weesey says, do you believe that Hunger Games, Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes looks to 100 million worldwide? That would be not good. We'll talk about it on a movie math on Sunday. But I mean, I mean, that's worse than the Marvel's opening weekend. Uh, Dream says, when I mentioned trolling, I'm suspicious of it on your content and also the past week from the Marvel's comment section. Looking at the box office for Hunger Games, it seems to be all oh, the same. Well, Rachel Zegler is very much cut from the same cloth as Brie Larson, and I think that they might get similar, similar responses to their behavior. Sean Turner says, been thinking a lot about Greta Gerwig's Narnia, and with the crown on the horizon, Elizabeth Debicki would be a great white witch, the Tilda Swinton role from the original movies. That's a great idea. I just want her to get more attention. She's brilliant. And then Kate, Kate, I loved your enthusiasm before the stream started. I saw that. Hey, Grace, my first super chat was asking if Valkyrie would be in the Marvel. So since she was, I thought I could send another super chat as celebration. Yay! Yes, that, I liked that scene, Kate. I thought that was fun. And I love the way you bookended your, uh, our interaction on it. That was a great idea. And let's see here. Raphael says, hey, Grace, just wanted to say that my dog pa oh, passed away this Sunday. And Movie Math helped distract me from crying for a while. Oh, Raphael, I'm so sorry about your loss. But that just means that you and your dog were very close and he had a great life. Cowboy Kush says, made it to the end of the stream. Oh, yeah, you did. Oh, I'm glad I'm glad you like my shirt. Yeah, yeah. I, I would be overwhelmed if it was something worthy of the Beyonce uh, tour. So, I mean, I thought her fashions were incredible. 
Collector, the three big trades are the Hollywood Reporter, Variety, and Deadline. Way behind here. I gotta go in just a minute. All right, I remember that pumpkin pie comment was the last one. Wiki Nomad, thank you for gifting a membership. Hey, in New Jersey, uh, Pussy XE. And Maleficent says, hi, I have to write a university paper about a streaming service and its discourse within the industry context. Got any ideas about what I should, what I should write about? Disney Plus is a really good one. They got a lot of problems and successes. And they also started this whole trend of all the studios getting trying to be Netflix. So I think they'd be a good choice. Oh, yes, Michael Macenas. I love Pecan Pie. That is my favorite. Dream says, Lessons in Chemistry is fantastic. Everyone keeps saying that. For some reason, I don't want to watch it. Graymo says, Hi, Grace. Happy early Thanksgiving. Are the What If episodes essential or more fun additions to the MCU? I think, I haven't seen them yet. But I think they're probably just like the first series. I haven't heard anything about the Eternals, Michael. Oh, hey, Joanna. I'm glad you missed Think About the Ink. Oh, uh, we still talk about comics uh, in our own way. And love to you in Brazil. Rye says, what would be your pitch for Captain Marvel 3? To not make it. I would not make that movie. Jake Van Norden says, uh, yeah, every, yeah, the deal is not closed for Pedro Pascal. <clears throat> Let's see here. Munchy Ice says, would you say bringing some friends who are non-fans to the new Hunger Games movie is a good idea? I'm a huge fan, but I don't know if I should go alone given the long runtime. Well, I'm not a big Hunger Games fan, and I enjoyed it. So I think you could definitely go. I, mean, I think you could definitely take them. Shane Trujillo says, Marvel should adapt Rick Remender's X-Force storyline. I don't remember that. Ah, uh, thanks, Terry. That's very sweet of you. Malala, thank you for the notes on uh, um, uh, Tainok, uh, Huerta, Tainok Huerta. So, Tainoch, you're saying it's Tainoch? I heard it was, ta I, mean, I, mean, I mean, I'll certainly take in consideration. I mean, I just, I don't, I can't take it necessarily at face value, but I will reevaluate my pronunciation of the name. Do you think the Hunger Games, Kirsten Dunst fan, I love Kirsten Dunst too, says, do you think Hunger Games may be settling in rotten territory will hurt the box office? Is it down into the negative? Let me see. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, it did slip into the negative. That's mean. It's not that bad. I mean, it's not like a work of art, but it was good. Oh, let's see here. Uh, thanks for all the hearts, everybody. And thank you so many people for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Uh, let's see here. Writer Boy says, when do you think we'll see Monica again? Uh, I think Secret Wars. I think everyone's going to be in Secret Wars. Ah, uh, Tammy, thanks for gifting five memberships. Very kind of you. And Raphael, gifted 10 memberships. Ah, oh, in honor of your dog, uh, I, I would assume. That's so kind of you, Raphael. Uh, Rick, I'm so glad you're enjoying the streams. That's very nice. And Devin says, for anyone considering if they should see the Marvels or not, my husband and I redid our MC rankings and it made it in the top 20. I'm glad to hear that, Devin. Uh, I'll watch says, what snack for the Hunger Games? Rainbow gummy worms? Oh, I think that's a spoiler. Let's see here. I am going to review The Crown Season 6, Chris, but I can't review it. I was going to post my review when it dropped at midnight, but maybe I still will. I'll have to see how I feel. But yeah, uh, the review embargo is when the show drops, which is annoying. Uh, so let's see here. The Hollywood Reporter didn't confirm it. They're just saying that he's circling it just like everybody else is saying. They're saying that scheduling is a factor, probably because... Uh, probably because of Last of Us 2. All right, I think I better get going. Let me do shout outs before I head out. 
All right. What is everyone doing? Uh, let's see here. Steve Quantanilla says, hi, Grace. I'm just walking my dog in Los Angeles where it's drizzling. Oh, stay dry, Steve. Let's see here. Shahar, I know you loved Trolls 3, but I don't think I'm going to be able to watch it because I have a screening for Wonka instead, and I couldn't pass that up. Evan Moore says, cooking lasagna in Pittsburgh. I love Pittsburgh, and I think lasagna is pretty good too, so that's quite the evening. Oh, uh, let's see here. Danny says, I'm getting my three-year badge in a few days. Ah, oh, that's great, Danny. I'm excited to see it on you. Jerome is eating yogurt in bed in London. Ah, I love it. Let's see here. Uh, Stu Pew Pew says, Grace, will you do any Christmas watch-alongs? Yeah, we'll do in December for sure. And maybe even, maybe because our next watch-along is for the movie club is going to be after Thanksgiving. So maybe we'll watch a Christmas movie. Just Josh says, just Josh says, cozy watching and enjoying my Christmas trees. Ah, I love it. I'm getting my Christmas tree after Thanksgiving, but I am putting my Christmas decorations up a little bit early, uh, you know, besides the tree. Jareem says, sipping bourbon in Cleveland and watching the stream. Ah, love it. Well, Anna Kosa, oh, Anna, it's so nice to see you, says, making pickle soup here in Indiana. Matt's coming at us from uh, Michigan. Dory wants to watch Jingle All the Way. Ah, I've seen that movie a lot. It's hilarious. Dasha, Danza, Pranza, Vixen, Kama, Cupid, Donna, Blitzen. Let's see here. Anthony says, hi, you're from your friend from afar in the UK. Hey, Anthony, I always love seeing you. James Griffin says, headed to bed in a cold London. Have a great day, everyone. Ah, yay. Cosmix has been cutting sugar and feels a lot better. I'm so glad. Welcome to the no sugar train. Ah, uh, let's see here. Uh, Iron Issa says, about to go to sleep in Belgium. Thanks for staying up. Well, Mr. Magic is catching a train in Portland. Oh, Anna, I'm glad you saw my, you heard my comment there. Uh, let's see here. Ricardo says, love from Brian and Ricardo in Edinburgh. Well, Ross is excited for Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Yeah, it's going to be good. Emilio says, on a relaxing pause from work with BTT. Is that, what's BBT plus? So do you mean BTT? Or is, I, my apologies if you're speak, regarding, uh, referencing something else. Mish says, eating chocolate, editing a video, and watching this stream. It's past 12 a.m. in South Africa. That's awesome, though. You're in the zone. CJ says, finishing up some work. Got to start some homework homework before Survivor. Sorry for the crazy stream today. No worries. And I love, yes, we were both New Yorkers, and I love that you always put Marvel in there. That's his dog. That's CJ's dog. Brad McDonald says, 40 minutes into my bike ride at home in Australia. Thanks for a fun stream. Oh, that's great. I'm glad we could keep you company. And then John Hobbs is playing Hogwarts, Hogwarts Legacy with the rainy weather in Georgia. Oh, that sounds very, very cozy. Well, Leonardo is surviving record heat in Brazil. Oh, that's so crazy. That's right, though. It's your summer right now. All right, I better get going. I better get working on my crown review. And tomorrow, the Napoleon review will be going up. Joe says, hey, Grace, been watching you for years, but this is my first super chat. You've probably been asked this before, but would you prefer Kang to stay as the main villain of the MCU or should they switch to Doom? I would bring somebody else in entirely, but between those two, I would probably go to Doom, I guess. And Dr. Doom, toboggan, that's great, says getting ready, go to, getting ready to go to an evening class. Oh, that's great. And Josh says finishing up work today, we'll, we'll catch beginning of the stream later. Oh, I love it. And Marcus says hello from Holland. Oh, you guys are great. All right, everybody, I will see you. I'm hoping to do two more streams this week, tomorrow and Friday. But thanks, this was a roller coaster of a stream. I, we survived it, and I think we had a good time. I hope you did. I had fun. You know, looking back, it was fun. Hey, Ricky, toodles, but it was crazy in the moment. All right, everybody, bye. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye.